goodness and stuff yes. all the time in our mm-hmm. life. He's good to us, even when we're bad to ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. The Word of God to the people of God. When they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son, Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. And the angel said, do not lay a hand on the boy. Yes, the angel said this. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Mm -hmm. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. Genesis 22, 9 through 12. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us, let us pray. Mm-hmm. Our Heavenly Father, we'll come to you today, Lord, just to say thank you. thank you. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be in this service, and thank you, God, for your healing, God, is going to come forth in this service. Thank you, Lord, for clarity. Thank you, Lord, for love. Thank you, Lord, for joy. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost, good time. We we'll come get a hand and let's will be done and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to travel the dangerous highway find ourselves back into the house of God. And then, Lord, we're saying thank you. We, we Lord, we don't want to walk because of how good we were, but because, because of your mercy and your grace, oh God, that we're here. And God, we ask you, Lord, and thank you for the anointing, God, upon all those that are in this congregation and all those that are hearing on the airways. Let it be something that's said in this service. And we we'll say, I have made another change in my life. And our Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name, and I thank the Lord for those who are sick and are listening. Let your healing power come forth. Oh Lord, let them be able to write in or in whatever way of communication they have and say, doing the service, something happened in my life. And God, I just want to say thank you. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
the Constitution of the United States, astrology, zoology, geology, moral philosophy, and evidences of Christianity. Over time, they attracted more students. And by the time the first term at their school ended, they had 80 students in that school. The Women's Affiliation, Women's American Baptist, excuse me, made a down payment on a nine-acre tract of land in Atlanta, which was close to the church where they began. They had five buildings on it left from the Civil War. So in 1882, the two women returned to Massachusetts to put in a bid to solicit funds. And they run into a Northern Baptist businessman named John D. Rockefeller at a church conference in Ohio. Rockefeller was impressed by their vision. In 1884, he visited the school. By this time, the school had 600 school students and 16 faculty members. And it was surviving on donations from the community there in Atlanta, other philanthropists and black community groups who raised money to try to settle the debts on the property. Rockefeller was so impressed with the school that he paid off the property. For them. This is when the school's name changed. Laura Spellman Rockefeller and her sister Lucy and their parents, along with John D., had went to Atlanta and they became enamored with the school and what was going on. So Rockefeller donated more money to help with the building. And the school's name was changed from the Baptist Seminary that it originally was, and it became known as Spelman College in honor of Rockefeller's wife. Uh, Spelman was her maiden name. But they continued on. Patrick was the first president. She passed in 1891, and Giles assumed the presidency until her death in 1909. Spellman is well known. It was the fourth largest black female institution of higher education in 1924. So Spelman holds the distinction of being America's first, oldest, private, liberal arts, historically black college for women. Spelman is ranked among the top liberal arts colleges and number one among historically black colleges in the United States. The school is also ranked in the top 50 of four, four-year colleges because they send so many people to medical school who get their bases there. But Spelman still ranks as number one in baccalaureate uh, institutions in this country. Spelman is the ultimatum Altamada, excuse me, this morning, of thousands of notable Americans, including the CEO of Science Club and the former vice president of Walmart. They've had Pulitzer winners, Alice Walker, the dean of Harvard College, Evelyn M. Hammonds, who was an activist in the Children's Defense Fund, founder Marion Wright Elderman, 
and then the activist historian Bernice Johnson Reagan, Pearl King. Then you have other notable personalities, Rolanda Watt, the opera star Matilda Wild Dobbs, the actress Latanya Richardson, and Adrian Joy Johnson. Kishi Knight Pullman, and many other ladies who attended Spellman and stands as a testament to who Spellman is and what they're about and what they was founded for. Thank God, women. <laughs> and, and Dr. Gamble was reading the Black History segment uh, for today. I don't know, in my head I just kept hearing, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Community programming and 97.5 digital at 11 o'clock a.m. each Tuesday. If you need to contact the church, please email us at Cox Memorial FWBC at gmail.com. We have two ways of online giving. If you would like to sow a seed here into our ministry, we have Cash App, which is dollar sign Cox Memorial FWBC, and we also have Tithely. T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. If you go to our website, which is Cox Memorial Free Will Baptist Church dot org, as you are surfing the net, you will see the donate tab there that will take you directly through Timely. Again, we are located at 1632 Riddle Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. 
on the corner of Kirby Street and Riddle Road. Amen. Yes. We thank God for allowing us to see the first Sunday in February. Amen. Amen. It could have been the other way. It might even should have been the other way. But thank God for allowing us to see the first Sunday in February. And guess what, y'all? We even got us another day. <laughs> They gave us 29 days this year, amen. <laughs> uh, and also to let everyone know, we will be starting our Bible study coming up this Wednesday. We will start a series, and it's titled, A Shepherd Looks at Psalms 23. So we're going to do a deep dive on the tw into the 23rd Psalm, and it's going to be Led by our own Dr. Donna Gamble, who will also be bringing us the word this morning. So you will see a flyer posted on Facebook. And come on and join us. The word says, study to show thyself approved. So we do need to get together so we can learn the word of God. And you'll be seeing more information about that. Does anybody have a birthday or anniversary in the month of February? Well... My uncle Michael does have a birthday uh, in February. It's February the 8th. And okay, so if you have a birthday or anniversary in the month of February, we do say happy birthday or happy anniversary to you. We don't want to tie you out with all the words, but we learn things through talking and communication. Amen? Amen. So you can't say you didn't know something if you didn't hear it. Amen. So we want to make sure that you know the good, good things that God has going on here at Cox Memorial. And we look forward to the many more blessings and uh, the good news that he has coming here from yours truly at Cox Memorial Free Will Baptist Church. And we just look forward to continuing to have a great day. Amen. 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 You know, I always say nobody was pushed in here. We all walked in here, dragging our legs a little bit, but we all walked in here. Amen. 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 So to God be the glory, we're going to sing our next song, and then we'll have the word. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Pick you up, turn you around. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Not just turn you around physically, but it turns your view around. Yeah. Of how you see him. How you see yourself. Yes. And others that he had created. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, holy God. Thank you, Lord. Merciful God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to awaken to look Lord. upon this day. Yes, God. Not being selfish. But I got to thank you for myself because yeah. nobody else will. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this yeah. day. Your guidance will help the Father yeah. this morning. Thank you, Lord. Your holy guidance. Our scripture this morning is the scripture that I read uh, at the beginning, Genesis chapter. 22 verse 9 through 12 titled Understanding the Death This portion of scripture paints a picture of blunder that we man making our thinking that the final thing God wants of us is the sacrifice of death. Death meaning the physical body. But that's not true. What God wants is the sacrifice through death which enables us to do what Jesus the Christ did. To sacrifice our lives not for ourselves, but for others. That when we sacrifice our lives for others and for Him, that we lift Him up, that all may know that He is God. We have to go with the understanding that we found in what Christ did, that I'm willing to go to the death with you, but also I am willing to be identified with your death so that I may sacrifice to God and that he be lifted. We have to keep it in mind that God doesn't want us to just give up things because he will give you what you need and give it back. Consider Job. Look at Abraham, who, in what he was thinking, was prevented from making a wrong move because what he had been asked to do, he was looking at it in one view until they started getting close and his son said, Dad, we go out to worship. But where is the sacrificial lamb? Mm -hmm. And Abraham, being who he was, mm -hmm. he just told his son that God would provide his lamb for the sacrifice. Right. Abraham was trying to teach his son something but he prophesied when he did. Yeah. Because all Abraham knew at that time that God had never failed him. Mm -hmm. And that God would be with him on this. All he had to do was obey. Right. Because his faith in God had taught him not to argue with God. Right. Obey God in his commandments. When we obey and make the sacrifice, we loosen bonds and binders that we have put on ourselves in 
taken the wrong understanding from the scripture. All right. This is one of those times, even though God had done for Abraham everything he told him he would do, mm-hmm. Abraham was still in a mindset where he had to kill his son, shed his son's blood for God. But that wasn't what God was looking for. God was looking for the obedience. And in that obedience, as I thought about this all week, last week, I started looking at this scripture about three weeks ago. And I was saying, how? But I had to back up, stop, continue to read the scripture Pray for clarity. Because God will give the guidance and understanding. Because after I understood that to kill yourself and die, Mm -hmm. saying you're doing it for God, Mm -hmm. you're doing nothing of value to Him, nor of value to yourself. Because the sacrifice that he wants us to be is a living sacrifice. Amen. So in being that living sacrifice, we got to release all the powers that we have. Amen. Everything that we can do and let it be in his hands. Yes. And then, then in his hands, he can take that power and make it into what you never could. An idea of that, again, is the three Hebrew boys. Ben and Go, and his friends, when they went into the furnace. They knew that they weren't going to kneel down to a statue because they understood that if you took the material things and shaped it into whatever you thought it might should be looking like, and call it your God, there's something amiss. Because how can something that you build and set up have any power to do anything for you? Because it wouldn't exist if you hadn't made it. So that's why it can't be a God that controls your life or give you what you need when you need it. But the three boys in the fire, fire did not touch them. It left no odor on them. No burns, no stars, no nothing. That fire, in fact, strengthened their faith in God and who he was, what he could do. It's strengthened it. Because God had already let them know that he would be with them. He would not need them. The same with us today. We got to turn it over to God. Turn everything over. Mm -hmm. Our lives, what little money we might have, everything. And let God have it. The strength that we have, the understanding that we have, we got to turn everything over. And as we continue to look at Isaac and Abraham as they're making this journey, Abraham not saying anything. He's quiet because he loved his son. He loved his son. But he was willing. To sacrifice his son on the altar for God. Because he knew that if he obeyed, if he obeyed, God would take care of everything else. Everything. And even when he told his son that God would provide his own lamb for the burnt offering. 
Abraham had faith in God that he would do what needs to be done. But he did not know how right he was that God would provide a lamb for him to put on the altar. Now they had traveled there, got wood, and made a, a, a field prior. And it don't make no sheep, no nothing anywhere. But when it comes time for the sacrifice, the Bible says that there was a lamb ensnared in the thorns. Now, ain't that good? It is good. The sacrifice that we think of and talk of all the time that Jesus Christ made for us, we call it the great sacrifice. Because when Christ was stretched and nailed to the cross, and that cross pulled up a tree, and tied up. With one thief on this side below him and the other on this side below him on that tree. How great was that sacrifice? And it came in the fullness of time because Christ would not have been crucified before time. He would not have been crucified after the time that was appointed, he was crucified in the fullness of time when it was supposed to be. But the angel of the Lord, looking at Abraham, when he called to him from heaven, and there's one thing that you got to do you got to answer God when he called you. Because we got to be obedient. We got to have faith in God that He is who He said He is. That He does what He said He will. The only one that I have ever read about in any book to be known as I am that I am. Nobody else. Uh, there's a Latin phrase that speaks of the scriptures. I can tell you what it says, but that wouldn't do any good, so it's best to put it in dialect ventures. It says that the Bible is the book which clarifies other books and what they say and what it's done in the natural world. But there is no book that can clarify the Bible. Because the Bible is the book of life and everything. So as we are thinking about obeying, giving God his honor and his praise, giving him the glory, just in a moment without hesitation, you have to consider how the full act of faith works with you. Because yeah. faith is what makes you praise God in the storm. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you trust Him down in the back. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes you follow Him wherever He may go. It, it might be dark in hand of Him, but if you follow God, yeah. Yeah. He is the light. Upon the pain, you will not stumble in a misstep because he's guiding and he's leading you. And your faith is that you believe and trust in him fully. You trust in him more than you do going down a flight of steps in the dark. Because you do that and think nothing of it. You take one step at a time right on down the step. Why can't we have that type of faith of God? That He is all that we need. And in our obedience to Him, we do not need to become a, a, a speckle. 
today. Because God, by his providence, calls us a part where I say sometimes that we must do it with cheerful submission to his holy will. And those aren't my words. Those words come from 1 Samuel 3 and 18. <laughs> yeah, stay with me. So, I know I didn't have much this morning, but what I had, I thought was good and correct. Because if I sit at my computer and was writing and typing, and I kept trying to extend these two pages, and it didn't happen. So I knew once I could get past that, that I had all I needed. Mm -hmm. To give God his glory and his honor and his praise. So at the end of this, there's three items I would like to say for you to take away. Number one, God does not want dead men. He won't allow men that will praise him. Say it again. He won't allow the men that will praise him. The scripture and everything that gives this understanding, I know it uses the word man or human child to represent all people, male, female, chick, child, daughter, son. But can I put a little extra emphasis on that? He wants a lot of men, not women, but men that will praise him, Amen. give him the honor and the glory. For he is worthy, he is worthy. And then number two, Solomon Ecclesiastes states, a dead man knows nothing, thereby offers no praise for our holy God. Our praise to come while we're living, and he's holding on to us and keeping us. He holds you in a way that you're covered and protected, because there are unseen things that come at you. Driving through the no man lane on the road and you get hit from the side and you didn't even see it coming. Uh -huh. And you're able to get out that vehicle and walk away. Right. Only, mm -hmm. only to the mercy and the grace of God that it happened. It's good. Not bragging, but had it not been for God on the 13th of January, I might not be standing. I probably would have already come through and then lay stretched out somewhere. But God. But God. I never seen it coming, never anything could happen. That's the reason. I say a lot of times, thank God for who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all that he has done. Yeah. Thank him definitely for stuff that he has stopped yeah. that was coming to harm you. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't even see it coming. Yeah. But he stopped it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. He takes care of you. Yeah. Yeah. That morning, when you get ready to go out and you didn't pick your car keys up and then go back in the house. 34 seconds. You go in, get your keys, go back out, get your vehicle, and as you drive down the road, you see a big old accident in front of you. Just kind of think where you might have been had you had your keys in your hand when you first went out. No, that's protection to me. Yes, yes, thank you. Another thing is those that you call your friends. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, when you ask 
God can hit you in doing the right way and lead you. And he takes his pair at night and starts to pair out all the folks that you don't ever hear when they're talking about you. Put you down. Chopping you up. You know, you have to be careful when you listen to folks say, well, let's chop it up some. You know, let's chop it up. Carry some meaning with it now. Lastly, Paul in Romans 12, 1 through 2, tells us that our bodies and glutes of the heart is a holy sacrifice to be presented to the Lord. We cannot just give our bodies alone. The heart in its fullness must be different. The heart. We say resides that we know and understand about God and who he is. The heart. Closing on these thoughts. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power, the strength that we have, is from God, not from ourselves. Amen. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Amen. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus the Christ might also be seen in us. That thought coming from 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10. And then closing it, it says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Walk with Jesus. Let him lead you. Let him be your all in all. For again, we understand that our faith is strengthened when we praise God in the middle of the storm. Uh-huh. You trust it down in the valley yeah. that the mountains aren't going to take you in and cover you up. Uh-huh. So you follow him in the dark. And you follow him in the dark because you know that he is light. And where there is light, there is no darkness. God is the light of the world. There is no other light like God. So, as we consider that this morning, consider what your light is, where you at, there is your opportunity to let Christ be your light. You had the opportunity before I stood to speak this morning. But as I said earlier, we got to listen. Amen. We got to hear God when He calls us. And when He calls you, don't run. Amen. Don't run. Amen. And it will get to you now. You sitting in your truck, doors locked. And you hear that. Again. Took four or five times to get the understanding. Don't run from God. Understand that God is our everything. 
the ring of death. He covered everything. He paid the price. Also in the death, understand that it's obedience. It's obedience to God that strengthens our faith and allows us to step forward to where you are guided. Not wanting you to test it yourself. Don't be like Gideon. Without it, it was you. Put this lion skin on the ground there through the night. It'll be dry, and the ground under it will be dry. It was so. But Gideon then couldn't take it. Couldn't understand it. He asked him this time to make the animal skin wet the ground under it wet and everything around it be dry. God did that. He did that. He did that. Obedience. Obedience to God is what we have to do. Amen. Obedience. Amen. Yes. Amen. We thank you, O Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this morning. Yeah. Thank you for your scriptures. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your people. Mm -hmm. Thank you every time yeah. that you allow me to stand before your people wherever it may be. Yes. It is an honor that you give. An honor not to be taken lightly. Yes. An honor to do as Paul said. Tell the people what you have been told. That's the truth. Do not put it in your Williamisms or your Jamesisms or your Donnaisms. Let it be God. Let it be God from the beginning to the end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Worthy, oh God, Lord. All right, oh. Jesus. Let's prepare.